Hey, what's up, guys? It's Jonathan with Red Free Moto. I'm here in Hatteras, Hatteras Island, North Carolina, in the Outer Banks. And this is my last day renting this 2018 Triumph T120 Bonneville. Uh, I thought it would be a good time to kind of do a quick review of the bike, uh, my impressions of it, my experience with it, uh, and overall uh, uh, thoughts of the of the Triumph T120. First, I'll uh, take and show you where I'm at. Such a beautiful spot. A little windy. There's some rain moving in tomorrow, so it's probably a, a good day to be uh, giving it up. Uh, but let's get into it. All right, I have switched over to my in helmet audio just because uh, the wind is so bad out here that I'm pretty sure the GoPro mic's not going to be able to handle it. But we'll start with a quick walk around of the Triumph T120 Bonneville. Again, this is a rental bike, so she's not perfect, but she's still got a lot of character. First, I'll uh, start with what I did like about this motorcycle. So, right off the bat, uh, this is obviously I'm I'm used to riding a cruiser, or a Harley. This is very different. It's almost like a like a cafe racer type style. Uh, you you sit very very uh, straight up uh, on on the motorcycle. It's almost like your knees because of uh, because of the pegs. Uh, being so far back, you're, it's almost like um, your when you sit on the bike, your feet are uh, kind of underneath of your of your knees, and uh, this definitely gives you a feeling of control o over the motorcycle, um, and a very upright seating position. So it's good for for your posture and everything. But I did find myself catching myself slouching a lot. So um, there's no way to put like a backrest on it or anything. But I don't normally ride with one of those anyway. It's just something I noticed that the seating position takes a little bit of getting used to over a cruiser where the footboards are, you know, your feet are forward. Um, I feel like um, over a longer ride with my knees sitting over top of my feet, uh, sometimes I have circulation issues in my legs, so that could be an issue for a long, long ride. Uh, this bike uh, definitely uh, is has a lot of good power. I noticed the power band. It's not like a V-twin. This motor is uh, a 1200cc, and I'm going to have to look up what kind of engine it is. It definitely is not a V-twin. It, it looks like a parallel twin or something like that. Um, doesn't look like a boxer, so I need to look up what kind of what kind of motor this actually is. But the power band is very interesting because of, with a V-twin, which I'm used to riding, um, you know, you have your low low end torque from 1500 to like 3000 RPM, and then after that, it kind of that's about it. So you have a lot of pull off the line. With this bike, it's different. Uh, in that I would say the power band starts at about 2,000 rpm below that there's really nothing there uh, you wind it up to 2,000 rpm and then it just pulls from 2,000 all the way to really 5,000 or, or 5,500 I really never got it all the way up there but uh, you'll notice this tachometer does not have a red line so I'm not really sure what that's about it goes up to 6,000 rpm uh, but I really felt like the power was adequate for the for the weight of the motorcycle. I never felt like it was underpowered. I never felt like it was riding a rocket ship either. Uh, but and if you open it up, it, it definitely delivered. I also felt myself, I think it's because the engine is so smooth, that uh, I really found myself winding up the gears probably more than I should have. Like I'd look down and, uh, you know, in third or fourth gear and I probably should have been in fifth gear or, or, or even sixth gear sometimes 
Um, so I really uh, felt like there was a lot of uh, a lot of range to each gear, and so that's a good thing. Um, I really feel like it, it really doesn't even need a six gear in the gearbox. Now for highway trips, absolutely, but this bike uh, you feel the wind a lot. So um, this little screen here takes a little bit of the wind off of your chest, uh, but that's about it. And you know this bike is not something that you ride to. You know, I, I guess you could, you certainly could ride it long, long distances. Uh, I, I think that it would be fun to ride across the country, but it would be very tiring. Uh, the, I really like the suspension on the bike. I felt like the suspension uh, was very, uh, so, like, I, I don't want to use the word supple, but it was soft. I mean, it, it was... Uh, it felt like it was well performing, uh, it was nimble, and yet it cushioned you from most bumps. I mean, if you hit a really hard one, then you were going to feel it. But, um, you know, it's got a shock on each side in the in the back, dual shocks, and, of course, dual in the front as well. So I really felt like uh, the suspension was was decent. This seat... Um, I, th I was surprised. I, you know, other than the seating position, the seat itself was actually pretty comfortable. Um, I was surprised by that because it kind of looks like a banana seat from the bikes in the, in the 1970s and stuff. Um, but uh, surprisingly, you know, uh, it, it was okay. Um, the, the stopping power uh, the bi on, the, on the brakes, you know, you've got, f you've got two uh, road disc rotors in the front here they're slotted they're, they're drilled and uh, and then in the rear you've got a single disc for all that braking uh, power I thought this thing would stop on a dime but um, and, and it could have something to do with the fact that uh, we may have a little issue here with some brake fluid leaking out but this thing um, the brakes weren't weren't incredible I never felt like uh, I didn't have enough brakes but it just wasn't um, the most impressive um, I'm trying to think if there's anything I really didn't like about the bike. I think that really the only things that I didn't like is the fact that I couldn't hear the pipes. Uh, the, the, the motorcycle makes a wonderful sound when you start it up. Uh, we'll do that real quick so you can hear it. Make sure she's in neutral. Got to pull the clutch in. And so it's just got a, a really nice uh, sound to it, uh, but it's, these are probably stock pipes. I don't see any indicators that they're on anything other than stock, but there's not a lot of sound to them. You really can't hear them when you're going down the road. And so just like a Harley, you know, you kind of have to, you have to, um, get some sort of an aftermarket pipe on there if you want any sound out of it it seems like but I feel like it would really sound good if you put some Vance and Hines or some kind of aftermarket pipe uh, on on the Triumph here uh, because this this engine does sound cool it's different and uh, I'd love to hear it more so uh, I didn't like that the pipes were, were really quiet um, most of the other stuff I didn't like about it was uh, had to do with the fact that it's a uh, it's a rental motorcycle and so the fact that it's a rental motorcycle means that you know it's uh, it's definitely ridden and it's definitely uh, ridden hard and put away wet um, it's cared for but you know it's got a lot of it's got some condition issues you know the uh, the tail light lens is cracked here um, the other than you know generally it's a beach bike so you've got a lot of uh, pitting on the on the chrome and uh, you know some some surface rust here and there. Uh, like uh, I noticed some here on the t on the top of uh, the forks here. I'm not sure what that's called. Sorry, I'm not like a motorcycle super expert. But um, then you've got uh, surface rust on the rotors here. I'm sure you noticed that earlier. Um, it hasn't affected the con the performance of the motorcycle at all. Uh, just it's it's aesthetic uh, and so it could be the fact that it's a beach motorcycle um, the guy lives in Kitty Hawk North Carolina and it's heavily rented out 
to people down in this area. I mean, if you look at the chain, um, let me get out of the light here. But if you look at the chain, um, probably some of you ha are having a heart attack right now, as far as the uh, condition of the chain. You know, it certainly has seen better days, but it's been performing fl flawlessly, and it's uh, it's been running great. So. Um, a couple of electrical issues this bike has, and, and again, this is probably just this motorcycle. I don't know if you've got a Triumph um, and you've got a history of electrical problems. I'd love to hear about it because maybe one day I'll add one of these to my collection. Not that I have a collection, but you know, maybe one of these one day I'll I'll get one of these. You know, just to to have as a uh, a bike to kind of tool around with shorter trips, whatever. Um, but uh, I don't want one with a bunch of electrical problems, that's for sure. And this bike has, you know, several issues. One was when I first got it, it didn't want to start all the time. It would just go click, and you'd see a, a picture of a wrench up here in the um, cluster. Uh, and then if you kind of tried it a few times, it would start. So it could be a faulty kickstand sensor. I'm not sure if it's that. Um, or if it was battery related, because... As time wore on, um, the motorcycle started behaving a little bit better. I, I didn't have quite the problems uh, as, as far as starting it. Like every time I started it today, I've not had any issues. And so, um, you know, it could just be a battery problem. I, I don't know. But and now it's charged better now that I've been riding it um, pretty consistently while I've been renting it. But I'm not sure. Uh, again, another issue that I've had with it uh, is, uh, and if it is a battery issue, I don't want to run this thing uh, too much, but uh, the turn signals. So uh, if you see, I've just activated the, the left turn signal, and you can see that it is not flashing. It's just got a so solid indicator, and then if you look here, it's just kind of solid. Then if you, um, gosh, the wind. Then if you do it to the other way, same thing, right? It's not flashing at all. If you kind of give the bike a jiggle, sometimes um, it, it'll start flashing. So it's not doing it right now, but it's it's weird, you know, and it's kind of a safety issue. So I was trying to use turns, uh, my hand signals and, and things like that. As you can see, it's lit up, and it's lit up in the rear. It's flashing in the rear. So possibly, oh, now it's flashing on the indicator too right so and now it's flashing in the front so that's what I'm talking about it's got like these electrical ghosts and uh, they don't really give you a lot of confidence when you're trying to use your turn signals <laughs> especially if you get cars behind you or whatever you know you kinda feel bad so you know hand signals are great but um, and I've got my brake free on the back of my helmet so that's good too but um, yeah it, it, it definitely was an issue um, also, the, the the low beam headlight is out on this bike, and I think that's just because it's burned out. So if you if you turn it on, um, uh, you have this cool little you know, LED light that really I don't think anyone can see. Uh, but you have nothing else unless you go for your high beam, which is uh, right there. So. So it's high beam or nothing on this bike, and a lot of times when you start it up, even if you turn the high beam on the, the last time you rode, um, you still don't have a high beam when you start it up again. You have to remember to hit that high beam uh, or else you're riding with very little forward visibility. And, and so that, again, was a safety concern for me, but I tried to remember to get that high beam on. When I first got it, I, I didn't realize it was out, and so... Um, was probably very fortunate that uh, nobody pulled out in front of me. Um, the paint for a beach bike, I think the, the paint, I love the, the, the pattern on it. I think it's, I love how uh, these tanks are. I think they're really cool. You know, it's very different being used to a cruiser or a Harley or an Indian. You know, these tanks are, are just have such a unique shape um, and just really uh, what I would call a work of art. So I really appreciate that about the the Triumph. I appreciate the the look of the tank. Um, I think that uh, 
you know, I love that this is here. I'm assuming that's to, you can hug, if you want to hug the, the tank with your legs, uh, that that's what that's there for. And, uh, you know, you do have passenger pegs. If you want to put somebody on the back, I think probably be a wise idea to get some sort of a, a backrest for the passenger. I'm sure you could get that, but, you know, those just float, fold down. It's nice to have those there. Uh, this bike also has heated grips. I had never tested them because it's, uh, it's like 80, 85, 90 degrees every day here, but uh, it's cool that, that uh, it has them. So, you know, if anyone's looking at a Triumph, this thing's obviously been, it's got about 20,000 miles on it. It's obviously been well ridden and I don't know how well loved. I don't, you know, obviously I don't know the, the complete history of this motorcycle. I don't know if the owner bought it used. I don't know um, if the uh, owner, um, you know, bought it just to, to have other people to rent or if he bought it brand new, got uh, tired of riding it and decided to start renting it out or you know what so um, but you know as far as far as uh, its condition overall it 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 goes you know that that's really the most important thing you know um, it's got some stuff that could be fixed on it but um, they're they're small things and they're probably easily fixed uh, the only other thing I was gonna say is the the tires they look like uh, they 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 have good traction good tread I don't know you know how many miles are on them but uh, I have no complaints about them this bike is very uh, nimble very flickable but also gives you a sense of stability going down the road and so you know one of these days I actually started looking for triumphs on Facebook marketplace just to kind of see what they go for and, and you can pick one up not the specific specific model but you can pick them up for as low as Thirty-five hundred or four thousand dollars, if you wanted to get a one that was a little bit older, and so I really think that it's a great bike, and I really enjoyed it. Rented it through Rider Share. Um, this is not a promotion for them. That's just who I used, and trust me, I paid. Uh, but for under hundred bucks a day, and the, I did a video on um, the breakdown of the cost and everything. I think it was worth it because, you know, to expose my motorcycle to the elements here. And to have to worry about trailering it down and worrying about it being parked in a safe place at night um, is a lot to worry about and a lot of, uh, of hassle. And so I think that uh, that for under 100 bucks a day, if I can rent something like this and have a good time on it uh, while I'm here at the, at the uh, Outer Banks, uh, it is absolutely worth it to me. So that's it, guys. I'm going to show you what I'm looking like right now. <laughs> I'm actually, uh, you know, got my helmet on so I could use the, the mic inside the helmet to stay out of the wind. But um, thanks so much for watching this review of the 2018 Triumph uh, that I rented through RiderShare. And uh, if you haven't subscribed to Rev Free Moto, I, uh, I appreciate your subscription. Thankful for you. And uh, please don't forget to hit that like button. That also helps me out. God bless. Love you all. And we'll see you in the next video. Thanks so much for watching.